Zanzi, it's time for the best of lifestyle and entertainment show. Reporting to you live from my SABC studios in Auckland Park, Josie. Welcome to Trends Live. Be sure to follow us on X is a Trends on SABC. Now, as we look at human rights in South Africa and commemorate the day, it only seems fair for us to invite the youth of Mzansi to unpack how they use their rights in their respective creative fields. And today, we'll be joined and speaking to the spoken word duo who goes by the name of Yamurai and will also be chatting to one of South Africa's best commentary graphic designer, David Shabalala, better known as Slaying Goliath. Now the Easter weekend is upon us and that means three things and three things only. Church, sweet confections and family time. For this reason, Trends Love producer Asanda Zondi joined a cookie decoration workshop around Joburg's Linden area where she learned to craft Easter inspired designs onto sugar cookies. Now let's discover the joy of creating beautifully adored cookies. Let's go have a look. Nothing screams Easter time quite like yummy cookies. You'll agree with me when I say hot cross buns are associated with the special time in the Christian calendar, right? But we took it a notch up and attended a cookie workshop where we learned about the art of decorating cookies for this Easter celebration. Here, we focused on frosting techniques, which is royal icing to make fancy on it looking cookies. Yeah, be serious. Is this fun? Well, let's find out. I just think it's good fun. You know, you come out with your, your kids, moms come with their daughters. You know, it's just a great day to spend together. I mean, Easter is all about family as well. So it's just a good day to spend with your family. So the cookies that we're decorating today are royal icing cookies. It's a basic sugar cookie with royal icing. So you get a plate, the cookie is a canvas and the royal icing is the paint. So you paint onto the cookie with the royal icing. Okay, so now that my cookies are laid in front of me, yes. what's the next step? So we go from the blank canvas, like I said, and then we'll basically just go into with, um, we'll draw out our design onto the cookie, and then with our paint, the royal icing, we'll color in the shapes that we've created now, and then we create, um, so today we're making an Easter bunny, for example, on the cookie in the shape of an Easter bunny, we'll paint an Easter bunny face on there. You know, decorating cookies shouldn't be a complicated task, but it does take some practice and patience. So today our class is three hours. Cookie decorating can be a bit longer depending on the design. Um, but one cookie can take you 10 minutes, one cookie can take you 20 minutes. It just depends on the design at the end of the day. Unless you have all the time in the world, please don't make royal icing from scratch. So you can make your icing from scratch. Royal icing is basically just egg whites with some uh, icing sugar inside. A lot of places do sell, your baking stores will sell ready mixes that you can just buy. So it's basically two parts. Uh, your mix with some water and then you just mix it down, follow the instructions on the packaging. Again, you can go online and find a recipe that works for you within your budget as well. Okay, so the colors, let's just give us an idea. Next week it's uh, already the Easter weekend. I'm gonna be with my family, obviously, and I wanna bake cookies and decorate them. Give us an idea of how to make my kids to blow them away with my cookie deco. The kids, um, they're out for the fun. They're not out for the seriousness, maybe, of cookie decorating. So you can go and buy sprinkles, you can go and buy sweeties as well that you can put on there, um, a variety of colors as well. So you can buy pinks and blues and greens and just make it really, really fun for them. And they can just go and have fun. Um, and just make a mess and enjoy themselves. Voila, indeed we made a beautiful mess. Now you know you can easily impress your friends and family with this minimal baking and decorating expertise. Now, Free State born and bred designer and illustrator David Shabalala, better known as Slaying Goliath, has come into the spotlight by using his graphic design to comment and tell a story around a newsworthy and societal issues. Now, for many years, we have seen him take to social media and to post the most beautiful highlights and in some cases, really sad occurrences in our country's tapestry. Now, today we look at, uh, we, we take a look back um, at Human Rights Day and we also unpack how he used his work to create more awareness on what is happening in and around South Africa. David, welcome to Trends Live. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I want us to start here, right? Who is David and the love for designing? 
So David Samalala is a graphic designer and illustrator. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm a storyteller. Yeah. I'm a social commentator. Mm. Um, I'll, I'll, I love it when my work uh, has an impact on society. Yeah. In the same way as musicians would, or dancers, yeah. or anyone trying to, to to almost like tell a story through their craft and skill. And it's important I ask, slaying Goliath, why? And what does that even mean? <laughs> <laughs> like I answer this every interview. Yeah. So my name is David. Okay. David slayed Goliath in yeah. the Bible. So I think it speaks about uh, a small person overcoming big things. Mm -hmm. I think in 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 my career as an independent artist, mm -hmm. I've worked with major. Uh, like global brands yeah. um, and and big um, campaigns. Yes. So I think it speaks to someone who's small and independent being yeah. able to take over the world, basically. Sure, Kocho, the CV is very good. Eh? It's very big good. Campaign and everything. <laughs> so now you have working um, in, in a newsroom of a weekly newspaper. I can imagine that drawing the line, you know, with your illustration is very important, especially including the impact, you know, that, that, that your, your craft goes into. How would you say that experience has shaped that. It shaped me a lot because mm. um, you can imagine a newsroom environment. You work yeah. with like journalists, storytellers, yes. people who take the news from society and also shape them and summarize them for for it to be consumed. Yeah. So I think working like in that environment where a word is not just a word. Yeah. Um, it's it's got that impact to that potential to like um, to make a difference. So I think being around like people like that also shaped me as an artist also to not just draw a pretty picture mm. but almost give it a message. Listen, for, for many years, I've always heard they saying that Josie is the city of gold, right? And for you, it is like literally the city of gold because you striked on gold. When you moved to Joburg, there were accolades after accolades. How would you say moving to Joburg has built for you or rather the accolades mean for you and taking that leap of faith? Well, you know what? I want to try the hand of God here. I'm, I'm going to test. <laughs> I think the environment is so important because yeah. I'm also surrounded by other like talented people. Yes. So I think when you when you see the competition, when you see your peers also like doing great things, it, mm. it pushes you more. Yeah. So like your environment is very like important in sort of um, shifting you like yeah. in, um, in the right way. And it's important that I, I, I bring this to the attention. You were nominated, right? At the Mail and Guardian top 200 young South Africans, one of the accolades that you got. What does that mean for you, my guy? So that means a lot. Yeah. Two years after we moved to Joburg, I won that accolade. Yeah. I think it speaks to the power of, of social media as well mm. as platforms to yeah. say, um, your work. I yeah. think I started like early on when Instagram was in in, uh, in its prime. Mm. Um, I started sharing sharing like my work on there, and it it's it's been viral ever since. Human Rights Day. What does it mean to you, and what does it mean to your work? To me, it means so much as an artist because yeah. um, it speaks to the freedom I have of with my like expression. Mm. Um, some pieces I do are very politically charged. They're very opinionated. And even with that, I, I still manage to work with brands who almost yeah. don't, they almost revel, like they almost um, appreciate my like honesty yeah. um, with expressing highly charged issues as well about just the political landscape of our country. So you being a designer does not always mean that you're going to be telling the most beautiful stories. It's, it's not always pretty, right? How does the sad and, and the not so good stories um, impact your creative journey or process actually? I think the lives we live, it's not just happy, yeah. it's not just sad stories. Yeah. I think the life of a human being, it's, it's ups and downs. Yes. And I think you see that like in my work. And yeah. as much as I celebrate great things that are happening, I also commemorate um, the, the, the sad things that have happened like, yeah. in our country. I think it's very important for my fans, for my followers as well, to see me express myself um, yeah. honestly. We are going to elections and you being a storyteller at Note, um, how important is it for young people to go out oh. and through your, your, your storytelling as well? I thought you were going to ask me who I'm going <laughs> to vote for. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's very important. <laughs> it's very important. Yeah. I think it's very, um, it's very important to... I have so many complaints and so many yeah. about the country, like we all do, because yeah. I'm impacted. Yeah. Driving here, the potholes, the yeah. traffic lights, when it's load shedding, things like that, yeah. I'm impacted as well. Mm. And it, it makes my work uh, like difficult as well sometimes when there's no power, obviously, with yeah. the technology like that I need. The only way to make a difference is to go to the polls and just make your mark. Um, yeah. I think, yeah, there are so many new, new players at the, at the polls. Earlier on, well. you mentioned something so important that um, you using um, design gives you the freedom of speech, right? Would you say that young people are using their freedom in the right way? From my lived experience, I would say so. Yeah. Um, again, social media is, um, the political parties are there. You can literally speak to the president from social media. He might not reply, but he will see. Yeah. Um, his communications team will see 
your cries. Yeah. So I think it's very like um, important now more than ever. Mm. I think with the new digital like revolution that's just going on, I think definitely, yeah. Speaking of, of digital revolution, does social media play an important role, especially in our time as young people, to build a career, to build a business, and you also posting on social media? Would you say that social media is not as bad as the older generation makes it to, 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 to look like? I, I'd say that, because yeah. social media is just a platform. Yeah. A lot of good and a lot of bad can yeah. happen on there. I think it's up to the individual person to have the right sort of, um, the right drive to be like positive and share like positive stories about themselves, about yeah. their work. So social media is just a platform. It's not an, an evil thing. Emination, right? You use a lot of emination there. Would you say it's your signature style? Yes, a lot yeah. of color as well. I love yes. color, I love expressive. I, yeah. I love my yellows and reds. Mm. Um, I love politically like charged colors. Yeah. Because um, on social media, when someone is scrolling through, you need to get someone's yeah, attention. attention. Yeah, attention, so yeah. Especially I'm, with the scrolling on social media. Yes, yeah. so I'm not just an artist. No. Um, I also have an eye for how digital works, how digital marketing works, mm. how to grab the attention of um, of a person scrolling down the timeline. Yeah. Where do we find you on social media? So on social media, I am slaying dot Goliath on yeah. Instagram. Yeah. My Facebook page is David Slaying Goliath. Uh, David Chabalala on Twitter. Yeah. And what's next for you? Is there anything exciting? What are you cooking? Just let us in a bit. I can't reveal <laughs> the brands I'm working <laughs> yeah. with. Yeah. NDAs and NDAs. But you'll expect the same work yeah. from me. Um, covering the elections, I'll be yeah. I'll be doing some exciting content over that as well. Yeah. All right, and who are you voting for? I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was David Chavalala joining us in studio to talk about the importance of being a designer and also an illustrator in the times that we live in. You know, also with the impact of storytelling, newsworthy in and outside South Africa because there's a lot that's going on. But let's go for a quick break, and when we come back, there's more of Trends Live. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're still tuned in to Trends Love. Don't forget to follow us on X. Is that Trends on SABC? Now, did you know that the global community every year celebrates International Waffles Day? The sweet or savory base made from a butter mix became popular in Sweden in the early 1600s, and now waffles are enjoyed worldwide. And from us in Mzansi, we gave the world DJ waffles. So let's all enjoy the waffles. <laughs> now, they evolved from being eaten with just jam and fruit to being enjoyed with savory or ice cream toppings and as the stomach eagers to prepare and to celebrate the international um, waffles day on the 25th of march our producer gadimilo malusi caught up with mark to chat a bit about his special crispy waffles let's have a look if you don't know how to spend your time these Easter holidays, how about learning how to make some crispy, mouth-watering delights? Not only do you get to learn the how, but you also get to indulge in all these goodies. We are today at Green Roots, where Mark is going to share with us his secret recipe. Hello. Crispy waffles. Thank you so much. Yes. Likewise. Welcome. I am Welcome so excited. I'm right. so excited. <laughs> Yeah, this is where all the magic happens and the happiness begins. Wow. And as you can see there, they're prepping some scrumptious crispy waffle. But how did all this begin? Basically, crispy waffles um, originated about four years ago uh, in my kitchen at home. Um, and the product was so amazing that I was told to, um, you know, start market marketing it. I was actually on a mission. To, to try and create a waffle that was, you know, different to the rest, that get all soggy, you know, when you put the ice cream on them and mushy. During that the whole process, I, uh, I ate a lot of waffles at eateries, um, and then one day I was basically sitting in one of the eat my last eateries, having the waffle, and but something just said to me, instead of doing this, try this. And I put my cash on the table, got up, ran to my car, and I did what I was told to do, told to do, yes. and, um, Made the waffle and but that's that's where it all happened. Eh? So tell us first about your crispy pizza. Um, well, it's just your basic um, but premium wood fired pizza. Pizza um, wood fired and uh, thin base. It comes with various bases, so you can have your normal flour or you can have your your gluten free base or your banting cauliflower or pumpkin or what whatever. It's just a nice sized pizza. We offer quite generous toppings. Because everything's measured and weighed, everything's, it's always consistent, and you get the same pizza each and every time. And 
the crispy waffle. What makes it so special? It's unique. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm probably going to sound a bit biased now, but people have told me that I didn't even get Belgian waffles in Belgium like this. It's my own recipe. Um, there have been a few adjustments that I've made uh, to get it perfect. And basically, it's just a nice, thick Belgian style waffle, crispy on the outside, airy and fluffy on the inside, and it pleases every palate. We do have the create your own option, mm -hmm. so you can build your own waffle from the menu, just the way you like it. We've got our standard waffles um, with standard toppings on. Our most popular one here at the moment is probably called the Beach Bum. It comes with cream or ice cream, banana, flaked almonds and a nice butter caramel sauce. Then we've got our classics like the, the Smooth Operator. That's also one of our top sellers. It's called the Smooth Operator. Um, that can come with cream, ice cream or half-half. It is just drizzled with golden syrup or maple syrup. And then on the savory side, again, you can create your own, but our favorite is, well, the two favorites are the breakfast one, which is called the Sunrise, which is like uh, the waffle with nice scrambled egg, streaky bacon, cheddar cheese and a bit of maple syrup. Then the Californian, um, that's probably one of our best selling savouries. Um, that's your crispy waffle with chicken mayo, streaky bacon and avo with a little bit of creamy mayo. Oof, that's a palate pleaser. <laughs> yeah, and we have, we've had some really interesting combinations and creations here. And uh, just to mention one, if you don't mind, a lady ordered a smooth operator with ice cream. So that's a waffle with ice cream mm -hmm. and some extra bacon. Judging by the number of people, young and old, who are coming here, it is clear that waffles are a favorite. These sweet tooth patrons shared the experience. These are the best waffles in the whole entire What are you having there? What is it? This is the nutty, what else? Um, the nutty creamy, the nutty creamy waffle. Got cho chocolate sauce, flake, uh -huh. cream and slithered almonds. Uh -huh. And chocolate sauce. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. And do you love it? Mm. It's a little piece of heaven. I come and spoil myself very often. <laughs> as, as you can see. <laughs> yeah, to tell you the truth, we, I traveled all the way from the East Rand for this waffle today. You are kidding. Absolutely not. This is why I'm here today. <laughs> what are you having there? A beach bum. Okay, and how is it? Very, very nice. Uh -huh. Yeah. Do you come here very often? No, it's first time. Is it? Yeah. Will you come back? Definitely. <laughs> Why? I like the triple XL uh, milkshake. Mm -hmm. No, it's just a large milkshake, but <laughs> 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 but it feels like <laughs> waffles and and ice cream. Mm. How is it? Good. What are you having there? A uh, mala choc, the best one, I think. <laughs> I must taste this. It looks very good. You have to, girl. You really have to. This is real good. Proper waffles. Very good. Really, really good. Love the bacon with the whole mix. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> And now that we have established that waffles can be enjoyed any time of the day, I'm convinced that you are thinking about making one right away. Now here are some tips from the crispy waffle maker himself. If there is something I could suggest to anyone out there that uh, wants some nice fluffy fluffiness in their baking, mm -hmm. separate your eggs. And there you have it, separate your eggs. Visiting a restaurant with a unique cuisine is always an adventure for your taste buds, right? Now, did you know that the Greeks dance and break plates after a meal in appreciation, in appreciation rather, of their feast that they've just had? Now, that's a very unusual practice. Probably the only time you were permitted to break in plates after eating, and it's loads of fun. Well, Trends Love producer went there just to check things out at the Greek restaurant and wine bar in Jeffreys Bay recently to explore what makes them such a popular eat out spot for both locals and tourists. Let's go get more. Just a stone throw away from the ocean, the Greek restaurant and wine bar in Jeffreys Bay is a delightful eating spot. It offers all sorts of salivating dishes specializing in seafood. And the cherry on top is that the food is prepared in Greek style. This and of course the special Greek bibs to avoid the succulent sauces dripping onto our clothes brings a touch of grease to the area. But before indulging, we are introduced to the ouzo, a traditional Greek drink 
to please and set the palate straight. We are the Greek restaurant. We do serve Mediterranean food. Though we have got specific dishes like kleftiko, which is our signature of the Greek, but we've got so we've got so much variety that we are well known of in the whole Eastern Cape. We've got the best prawns in town. If you look at our restaurant, it's a family restaurant. We are a Mediterranean, we cater all nations of the world. Tell us a little bit about the ambience. Is it like bringing Greece to Jeffrey's Bay? If you look at the Greek restaurant, we brought Greek cuisine, Greek spices to Africa in Jeffrey's Bay, you know, for us, for people to try and have a different flavor. Good food always makes for an amazing outing, and Chef Prosper certainly takes thorough pride in the dishes from his kitchen. Being in the kitchen, I like it because I love cooking and then also to teach other people, the young people here, yeah, that's what I like. Now you're busy preparing Greek cuisine. What is Greek cuisine really about? Greek cuisine is all about the seafood. You know, the Greeks, they like the seafood, and then with the calamari, local calamari, prawns, they are nice prawns, and then with also mussels, that's what they like. Is it the spicing, perhaps? What makes it great Greek food? We've got uh, our secret sauce here. You can go all over the world, you cannot find it. We've got our secret sauce that we use it uh, for the prawns and the mussels, and then we've got also the different spices. We don't do the deep fry because it's not held when you deep fry the food, you know. What is so amazing about the oven behind us? This oven is not just a pizza oven. It can cook almost everything. We can cook chicken, uh, fish, lamb shank there, and then. It's not only for the pizzas, we cook almost everything. Yeah. This is our like main kitchen. And truthful to its cause, the food is indeed a taste bud explosion. From octopus to mussels, big sized prawns to calamari, this was a golden meal. And it's not only limited to seafood though, this to ensure that those who aren't big on seafood still indulge in tongue tantalizing cuisine. George, you are of Greek descent. How did you end up starting a Greek restaurant right in the middle of Jeffrey's Bay? We have an industry in this country called tourism that is very misunderstood. People who travel, it doesn't matter if they travel to Africa this time or to North America or wherever, at some stage they'll go to, the, to Greece and to the Greek islands. So they're very familiar with that flavor. And that's the reason why I decided that I'm going to put a Greek flavor in the front lines of the South African tourism industry. I practice phylloxenia. Phylloxenia is two words, philos, xenos, to befriend a stranger. In Africa, we call it Ubuntu. Yeah. You must be friends to strangers and accommodate it. And that is what we do here. We want everybody to come and feel at home. Chef. Ultimately, what makes you happy when watching people eat your food? Because I can see they enjoy it. They come and appreciate us here. They said, yeah, we make a special nice food here. They can go well to it, but they cannot get a nice food like this. And then, in true Greek gratitude style, it was time for celebrating the meal. Believe it or not, this is an old Greek tradition and is totally exhilarating. Tell us about some of the cultural practices that your restaurant has adopted to give us a more Greek cuisine feel. There's a Greek uh, culture which is breaking plates, having dance. That's what makes the Greek in Jeffrey's Bay more unique. But why the need to break plates after having a meal? To cheer up yourself, to show up them that yes, I've been to Greece. I'm, I'm in, in Greece in South Africa. Yes, that's a great tradition. We've got so much place, place to break. And you know, people have fun. If you come in a Greek, in a Greek uh, restaurant, no, with your mood down, but the minute you come out here, mm, I'm telling you, you'll be super. An unforgettable experience, and indeed a very happy tummy 
thanks to the luxury of Greek cuisine in Jeffrey's Bay. Nice music, eh? Now, the much loved gospel singer, songwriter, and producer King D Music is using his music indeed to shine a bright light on the positive life we may live with the Almighty Lord Jesus Christ. Now, he does this by cleverly fusing different sounds such as pop. Afrobeats and Ama Piano while sticking to the CCM worship genres to create captivating worshipping songs. Now he's gearing up to release his latest album titled Hold On on the 5th of April and he's with us in studio when the blessings come up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank, no, I'm good, Welcome to Trend Live. Thank you. No, thank you for having me. Right, and congratulations on your new album coming up, Hold yes. On. And yes. you're referring to it as Lifeline. Why yeah. is that? Yeah. Ah, man, I uh, I wrote that album when I was like really in a dark space mm, uh, yeah. last year. And it's funny because, you know, people might might think that, you know, yeah. things were, you know, going good for me. Yeah. Um, I had just won a summer award. Yeah. Um, you know, I had, you know, all these, you know, big features, yeah. you know, uh, on, 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 the, on the previous album that I had. Mm. And, you know, things were going well. I'm, I'm performing and everything. But I, as a creative, I, I really hit a rock bottom and mm. I just felt like, you know, I didn't have, you know, that uh, oomph, you know, to want to yeah, create and, and everything. Yeah. And I think, you know, the, the, the song, uh, the, the, the main song also like of the of the whole album, uh, the, 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 the Hold On song, mm. you know, it was birthed out of that place of sure. just, you know, uh, wanting to just feel, to encourage myself to say, yeah. you know, keep going on, you know, yeah. just keep going, you know, yeah. God has called you to do this and, you know, uh, things are going to be all right, yeah. even though things are not going 
uh, the way you expected them right. to go right now. Yes. Like, you know, God is still yeah. by your side. So, yeah, on your and side. And speaking yeah. of God being on your side and yeah. things not going at the pace that you would wish one would have, mm -hmm. right? Three-time Grammy nominee, Dedrick Hayden, right? Yeah, yeah. Having to work with such a great legend. Yes. My guy, how did that even come about? <laughs> yeah. let's, let's do it. Um, so one day I was just, you know, scrolling on Instagram yeah. and I get an inbox. It was yeah. Dedrick Hayden. He's mm. like, yo, D, I really love what you're he doing. He inboxed Yes, me. he Shoo. sent me a DM. Hey, so look at you now. He came across my music yeah. on, uh, on Spotify. Yeah. And he was like, man, I really love what God is doing in your mm. life. And, um, you know, I'd love to work. So he was working on a song called Yesu. Yeah. So it was, uh, him and a guy called uh, Moses Bliss. Moses Bliss is, you know, one of the massive, you know, gospel artists yeah. from Nigeria. Yeah. And another guy called uh, Guya Martin. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's from Kenya. So yeah. he's like, you know, I'm trying to work on an on, on an African anthem, mm -hmm. you know, that yeah. uh, um, you know we can release in a month's time or, or something like that. Then he yeah. sent me the song. I like yeah. the song. Yeah. I jumped on the song. So he featured me first on his music. Yeah. And then I was like, oh well, while the window is open, Please. let me, you Please. know, let me send him praises. The song that I just did yeah. now. And uh, he liked the song so it was his first time jumping on an ama piano song so sure. and i was actually quite proud that you know as an african child and as a south african mm. child we have this genre that is like you know trending all over the world and i've always wanted to use it as a vehicle to yeah. push the message but yes. also to get to do that with a legend uh, in the gospel um, music like dietrich head and mm. man it was such an honor so yeah. speaking of actually jumping into ama piano and also <laughs> ama piano being a great thing right mm. chief it's pop it's it's afrobeat <laughs> and it's also this yeah. ama piano right yeah. and you having this love of all the genres and mm. using it to spread the word of God. Yeah. How do you go about the directions and knowing what's what? Um, I think also just uh, really knowing what works for the music. Yes. Um, listening to the music, you uh. know, listening to some of the tracks that are trending out there, you know, listen, listening to the cadence, mm. you know, listening to how people, you know, place the words on different genres. Yeah. And, uh, you know, studying that, just studying the, the music itself before you, you know, you can use it as a vehicle, yeah. you know, for, 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 for your message. I think, you know, that's really important for me. I, I always make a research and, yeah. you know, try and see like, you know, how uh, can I do this, you know, in a better way, in a way that, you know, it still is King D music, you mm. know, uh, even if I'm doing a pop song or Afro, Afro beat song or yeah. house song, like I just want to, I just want people to know that this is King D music when they yeah. listen to it. So I do a little bit of research just to find out more about the song. You started doing music, music at the sorry. age of 14, yes. at a very tender age, right? Yes. And just when we thought that you you, you are done breaking, <laughs> now how you are coming up with another accolade, um, <laughs> yeah. contributing to the Hillsong Zulu EP. Yes, right? yes. Well, what does such a moment mean to you and your career? I mean, that was amazing. Yeah. Uh, that was really amazing. Mm. I, I had, I got to sing, actually on that EP, um, I, I, I got to sing like, you know, uh, four out of five songs, you know, mm -hmm. on, on, on the EP. So it was such a huge honor and also um, a huge, uh, kind of like a not a weight but you know because we were working as a team you know yeah. I, I i i was part of the church yeah and um you know they just you know thought that you know as a worship leader um i can be able to do this so we're yeah. working you know with a team of other worship leaders at church so it really uh was a, a a momentous like you know a milestone for mm. me i think it was incredible just getting to work with a brand like that so yeah speaking of working with brands like that my guy mm. it's um travis green yes. it's naomi rain it's maverick <laughs> city music yeah, and then it's yeah. also martin smith you know you've yeah. worked with amazing people yeah. how would you say that as an individual do you sort of think it boosts you or is it a confirmation from god that mm. this is the right position for me it, it does boost you and I think also it's a confirmation from uh, from God that you know yeah. it doesn't matter where you come from. It, whether you're coming from Venda that doesn't mm, matter like yes, you know if I've yes. called you yeah. for the nations and for the world yeah. I will put you you know on these uh, 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 stages so like yeah I worked with um, Travis Green I was opening for him last year mm. when he was here in, in South Africa mm. and also Naomi Rain from uh, Maverick City yeah. I, I got to work with her then so that was amazing so that was yeah. right mm. and then dropping your album what's next let's actually yes. talk about the album yes in, in, in collaboration <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, yes, yeah. yeah. So um, the album, again, like it was birthed, you know, during that uh, a season last year mm. in May uh, when I did the, 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 the first song, you know, uh, Hold On. Yeah. And I didn't even know that, you know, the, 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 the Hold On song that I had recorded then, it was going to be the, the title of the album. Yeah. But I think, you know, the music that was just flowing yeah. from, from, from that season, yeah. like it had, you know, the same or, or like similar uh, kind of message. Yeah. So, yeah, man, it's, it's dropping on the 5th of April, All so right. I can't wait. Quickly on social media, yes. where do you find you? Uh, at King D music one word at king d music one yeah. word and one word is not part of the handle yes, He's it's just one word, one word. <laughs> king yeah, d king over d to d you music. wrap up by giving us a yes. nice music there and then we're gonna go for a quicker break and when we return we have more of trends live minute
over to you. When Let's the bleachers go. go up. This one is a, a, it's an exclusive. It's coming out on the 5th of April. It's called Hold On. Hold on, hold on. Don't let go. I fight and what I don't. Don't give up. Life can be unfair sometimes. But my God will make it all right. Nichi wanna just chick on that. Motimu cause you wanna. And some more each other with a quakwana. Nisa panda. Panda ngao panda. Eh, Nisa panda way. Panda ngao panda yo. Eh, it won't be long now. I see freedom coming. Breakthrough around the corner. Eh, it won't be long now. I hear chains falling. Blessings around the corner. Come sing it with me. Let's go. Oh, yeah. hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't let go. Mm. I fight and more I don't. Don't give up. Life can be unfair sometimes. I know, I know. But my God will make it alright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes the journey seems so long. Yeah. And the battles we face seem so strong. Oh, hey. We must keep on moving on. We must keep on moving on. That's why I say, oh, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't let go. I fight and not alone. Don't give up. Life can be unfair sometimes. But my God will make it alright. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Keep on holding on. Don't let go. Freedom coming, blessings around the corner. Yeah. It won't be long now. I hear chains falling, blessings around the corner. Yeah. You won't make it alright. I know I will survive, so I'm holding on tight. Joburg based collaborative spoken word duo Yamurai tackles topics surrounding black women in society and also draws inspiration around the human form. Now we wrap up Human Rights Month by speaking to these young, amazing, talented women who use spoken word as a form of self-expression and also tackle other forms of art in their projects. Ladies, welcome to Trends Live. Thank you. Yeah. You are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> right, I just want to start with you guys mm. first. How do we say the name and what is it? It must roll. Yamoria. It must roll. Mm, it's in Boya Moria. Yamoria. Yamoria. Yeah. Yamoria. Yeah. Yamoria. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, what is Yamoria and what does it mean? Um, so we have this fascination with the Native American tribe. Yeah. So they love to tell folk tales. Mm. They are very passionate about storytelling. Yeah. And they have this character, Yamoria. Yeah. And he is a storyteller and he shifts his reality through yeah. his words. Mm. And that's essentially what we do through our poetry. Okay. And Yamoria is a He's twin. He's a twin. So, so that's kind of I cute. Mean, <laughs> that kind of cute. <laughs> so Fumani, just for you, how did you find your love for spoken words? You know, Fuma and I have always put things down on paper. Yeah. It's mm. always been our thing. Yeah. And we ended up at the Joburg Theatre on a random day. And they were like, come in addition. Mm. And we're like, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. And then now we're trapped. Yeah. So <laughs> I think we always thought our work would stay on paper. Yeah. Yeah. But eventually it made it to the stage and we're mm. loving it. So we're loving um, it Fumo, moment. finding your voice in, in, in such a complicated, you know, industry or rather a creative space, because with mm. so many opinions that riddle us, how would you say you use your own voice? I think authenticity, yeah. being raw, being genuine. Mm. And I think I also realized that my voice is not for me alone. Yes. I have those standing behind me. I have those who don't have the platform or the space mm. to speak as well. So I think that is the most important for me personally, yeah. is ensuring that I tell these stories as true, as mm. honest, as genuine as possible. When I'm no longer here, mm. let these stories speak yes. for us, for black women. Mm. Sure. Yeah. As she said about authenticity, right? And I can imagine what you guys are doing is very spiritual. Mm. How important is authenticity in this actually? 
It's it's everything. Yeah. Pivotal. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's pivotal in what we do. Yeah. Um, and I think being honest with, with ourselves first mm. before we put things on the paper, before yeah. we present it to the world. Yeah. Just knowing that we are true to, to who we are yeah. mm. and our message. Right. Mm. Mm. Very pivotal. Yes, Human rights day. Mm -hmm. I can imagine as a young creative, mm. what does such days mean to you? Oh goodness, a voice. Yeah. Oh goodness, so a voice. You wouldn't have young, black, loud mouthed women <laughs> <laughs> with us on a platform yeah. like this yes. today yeah. without those rights. Yeah. Mm. So like I mean me just standing here in the flesh, my sister standing here in the flesh, mm. two young black women, that that's enough for me. Right. That is mm. enough for me. We're going in the right direction. Do you think South Africans, especially young South Africans, are mm. using their voice in the right way, you know, to address and shape what we wish to say should be the future? Of you know the young people that we put in our space yeah the art that they're putting out the music the work it tells our stories in the most raw mm. kind of way yeah. you know and it's things we can relate to things we can heal from and yeah. learn from so i feel like there's so many spaces where young artists are really using their voice and the rights that were fought mm. for mm. you know in a, in a positive way right mm. and, and, and speaking of rights i just want to throw this in right I, I can imagine with this year being very important for us young people you know going mm -hmm. into the polls and just trying to make that little bit of difference and also considering you know education be, be being a struggle for many right um with problems that we face in our country with eco economy as well you know mm -hmm. just not being able to afford your day-to-day -day life i'll start with you um fumani would you say that as, as <laughs> young people around. Around. <laughs> around. <laughs> you see there's a woman fumani yeah. 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 but then would you say that there's hope for us as young people in this country oh beyond hope mm. i think we are no longer sitting down we are no longer silent we yeah. are no longer afraid we are overt we are out there we are Unapologetic. unapologetic. Mm. We are so unapologetic yeah. in this journey. And honestly, I'm excited to see where it takes us mm. yeah. because that lack of fear is what we needed. We needed that little, yeah. we have that, that fire push. under us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we yeah. have that fire under us. And you take on that? You know what, I, I can echo from a sentiment. Days aren't the same. Yeah. Some days it feels like we're going 10 steps backwards, mm. 15 steps yes. backwards. But I feel like the forward steps is, mm. is, is what they we kind greater. of count on. They yeah. are greater, aren't yes. they? Yeah. Yes. Mm. Would you say South Africa is a safe place for women oh absolutely no. not mm. oh absolutely not if i think of my daily life mm. from the time i step out of the house my what outfit thought, you wear mm. what outfit I, in fact from the moment i wake up what yeah. outfit i'm gonna wear yeah. where i'm going which route i'm taking mm. like who are you going with how do you carry yourself everything yeah. Yeah. every day you considering your safety in every step that you take and it's, it's quite a it's exhausting thing. Yeah. I think it's exhausting. exhausting. So would I call South Africa safe? Not at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, man, there's just so much that needs to shift because the mentality of a young black woman is how do I protect myself? We yes. are in defensive, protective mode continuously yeah. mm -hmm. as opposed to just being present. Mm -hmm. So I think we have a long way to go on that stretch. Yeah. A very long way to go on mm -hmm. that stretch. You guys are like us of collaborations. Yes, oh, we right? are. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so yes, what yes. kind of projects are you leaning <laughs> on? To? Just, just let, let us into it a bit. Yeah. Well, this Sunday, um, Converse um, is sponsoring an event, yeah. I Am Warrior Sunsets. Yes. So it will be a poetry showcase with mm. music and dance and art. It yeah. will be at the Joburg Theatre 2 p.m. at mm. the Lissetti Theatre. Yeah. yeah, so we'll be collaborating with multidisciplined artists. Mm. We're going to have a percussionist. We're going to have a singer, dancers. Like, it's just, it's going to be so gorgeous to see all these different chaos. art forms yeah. chaotically <laughs> arising <laughs> and creating something yeah. so cohesive mm. and mesmerizing it's going right. to be gorgeous mm. all yes. right no listen you guys are going to be doing amazing keep on being the oh. voice of black women in this country Thank and you. also for young people oh. well i can say to you guys stay shining and shine brighter. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for joining us and tuning into Trends Live. It has been amazing. And when I say it's been amazing, I mean it's really been amazing. South Africa, Mzansi, thank you so much. For me, Tisa Zomasike and the amazing team behind the camera, good night and God bless. Wrapping up the show, they're giving us a beautiful performance. Ladies, it's a long show, man. Let's do it again. <laughs> Over to you. Mzansi, good night. The summoning and the spirit
pizzo le moya the renewal and the becoming go chafatsa le gotla the slaughter and the cleansing go tlhaba le go tlhatswa the summoning and the spirit pizzo le moya the renewal and the becoming go chafatsa le gotla the slaughter and the cleansing go tlhaba le go tlhatswa the summoning and the spirit the summoning and the spirit the renewal and the becoming the slaughter and the cleansing the summoning and the spirit the renewal and the becoming the slaughter and the cleansing the summoning and the spirit the renewal and the becoming the slaughter and the cleansing the summoning and the spirit the renewal and the becoming the slaughter and the cleansing the summoning and the spirit the renewal and the becoming the slaughter and the cleansing the summoning and the spirit and the spirit the renewal and the becoming the and the becoming the slaughter and the slaughter and the cleansing we are the striking and the rock we are called to the altar to be christened in the name of buried in a shallow grave in the name of suspended from god's grace they've been striking we are the rock to be discarded beneath things behind things inside things remaining silent things you are the massacre behind it you are the spandla feeding off of their wrists they're skipping stones with your bones willing you to hold yourself above water as if to say where is your jesus now as if to say where is the liberator of israelites now as if to say how many amens can we usher between your rib cage now as if to say who is your jesus now as if to say who is the liberator of israelites now as if to say how many amens can we usher between your rib cage now Coco danced herself into a casket, offering blood as a tablecloth. She is skin, melting away at the seams, offering her rapture as a chorus. Coco is still stitching her marrow together with her split ends. They don't quite match her crumbling nature, but Coco still lays myriads of her skin as prayer mats. She has always been the chanting, the chanting, the chanting before the sacrifice and you will always be more fisherman than sea trout, more visionary than burnt out, more magic than a rage of you are a packet of freedom, a fist full of liberty. You are cervix, dust, noise, reason, altar. Season. You are God's favorite theme song, darling. Even the sound of rain envies your bravery and she will always be the summoning and the spirit the renewal and the becoming the slaughter and the cleansing amen, amen.